Hi, I'm James Randi, but you already knew that, didn't you? And the gentleman sitting beside me here is a, oh, an old friend from way back. We're going to ad-lib this. We're just going to wing it. We're just going to talk. He walked into the foundation a matter of minutes ago, announced who he was. I recognized him, and now we're going to give you the pleasure of knowing Michael Edwards. You don't know the name? Well, you know about the Alpha Kids. And Michael Edwards was one of the two Alpha Kids, along with Steve Shaw, now known as the mentalist Banachek, with whom you'll be much more familiar. And this gentleman just walked in because he was on a business trip and decided that he was going through Fort Lauderdale. He might as well drop in and see the old duck and see if he's still alive. And you notice that I am. I, I have noticed that. Yes, indeed. Now, let me just run over very briefly uh, our association. Uh, not all the details. No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. I think the so, <laughs> uh, statute of limitations what, what has run out on it? some of those. That's true, that's true. What, what year was it, actually? Uh, originally, I approached you, and we started talking about Project Alpha in 1979. I was a 17-year-old high school senior. Good gravy. And uh, then started working with the Mac Lab uh, in November of 79. And before we, pr then by the time that we've actually exposed it, mm -hmm. It was February of 1983. Wow, he has all the dates. That's it, folks. Good night. Thank you. <clears throat> now, uh, what you've just heard about is uh, some of the details behind the beginnings of Project Alpha. This was done with some scientists, and I use the term in quotes, uh, at Washington University in St. Louis, uh, Missouri, and um, it was a, a thing. It was an infiltration thing. It was a scam freely admitted it was a scam. We had to show that parapsychologists, uh, when they thought they had a, a red-hot subject on hand, would decline to call in magicians. And it turns out that Mike here was uh, an amateur magician at the time, and uh, so was Steve Shaw, as I say, now Banachek. And uh, I, I made an agreement with them that if they went into the Mac Lab and all they had to do was apply and give a a plausible story about how they obtained their psychic forces, ho, 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 um, that if they applied and they got in there, that I would more or less monitor the whole operation, but I wouldn't tell them what to do. I would just react to what had been done in the lab that particular week. This went on for three years, as you say, Mike. I did. And um, over that three-year period, the guys would call me, and this is in the days before internet and Skype and a few other things like that, of course, They'd call me and they'd, in between bouts of laughter, they would report what had just happened in the lab. These two guys, Steve and Mike, absolutely flummoxed the people at Washington State University. I, I won't mention names, there's no reason for doing that, because these folks are still with us. They're still around and still working hard and they are academics and they deserve our respect. But they fooled them. The Alpha Kids really fooled them into believing that they, the Alpha Kids, had psychic powers of various kinds. And all of this will be handled in commercial. My new book, A Magician in the Laboratory, which is forming up right now. Now, Mike has to get away very soon. He's on a business trip after all. But I'm going to put into his hot little hands, I'm going to put a copy of the chapter on the Alpha Kids for his approval and perhaps for a few tears as well. But we'll find out about that later on. <laughs> now, you were an amateur magician. I was. You knew about mentalism and that sort of thing. And uh, you had contacted me, and Steve had contacted me separately. They didn't know one another. That is correct. And uh, they just uh, just lettered to the effect, you know, if you ever have to, to test the parapsychologist to see what they're doing, I'd be your man. And I didn't know what to do with these two letters that I received, and I stuck them in a file called Alpha. Not much imagination there, but it worked out very well for us. And eventually, uh, I had the two of them, and I thought to myself, wait a minute, what's in the news right now is that half a million dollars have been given by McDonnell Douglas Aircraft Corporation. Yep, James McDonnell. By Jane him. McDonnell yep. himself, now well deceased, and um, so he won't sue us. Exactly. That's always a relief. Is well deceased different uh, well, Very deceased. well deceased, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I thought, hey, this, this would be a great place to send in uh, the two kids, and I told them, Contact them, give them a plausible story, and by golly, you were accepted, mm -hmm. uh, Steve was accepted, and there was another fellow, what was the, uh, the fellow's name? He wasn't a kid. 
he was the other fellow that was that carried on with you guys and that you mixed with and such the the so-called psychic there oh um tom richards tom richards tom exactly richards. I, I had forgotten the name yes. thank you who cloaked himself as a researcher yeah even though he was generating the phenomenon himself yes now, we'll go into a couple of anecdotes on uh, how you guys caught Richards. It was okay. very evident to you, and I don't think he was really trying to hide it from you guys, necessarily. I don't think he was just, I don't think he was very good, first of <laughs> That's all. One but, reason, uh, yeah. but it was enough to fool the scientists. Well, it was. As I said, it doesn't take much to now, do that. Um, if I look at it this way. These scientists were well-trained academics. They weren't just people off the streets. They, they had, had training in science. They knew the scientific method. Uh, but they thought they knew too much. They thought that they couldn't be fooled because they had degrees. That's the way I have to look at it. Uh, it that's very true. Plus, I think they thought that because they were so smart and they were good in their specific fields, mm -hmm. let's say a professor of physics, mm -hmm doesn't expect the the physical properties of something to willingly and knowingly exactly. cheat and deceive him. Whereas it would have been far better, I think, as a test if you had somebody with a psychology background, at least, yes. that knew that the subjects in, in, uh, in these particular tests, Steve and I, yeah. were really out to deceive them. And, and I must say that uh, and when you see this, this, this whole episode, as I will describe it in my book, <clears throat> Remember the book? Uh, it was simple. The, the easy things that you guys did. Now, let's get into a couple of examples okay. of that. There was, uh, there was one I remember, and, and we've got it on the, the tape, as a matter of fact, on the videotape. Uh, that was an uh, 8mm film in those days, I believe, or 16mm, I'd forgotten. Back about. in those days, it was, yes, powered by dinosaurs. <laughs> yes. In, in days before <laughs> videotape was easily available. And um, I must say that I was astonished at had one episode there where a spoon apparently bent without it being touched, but we won't get into all those details at the moment. The point was that the spoon had gained a few micrograms in weight because they'd all been very carefully weighed and they had little tags, little like clothing tags with string put around the neck of them. And I had told Phillips, I said his name, sorry. I had told him, be sure that the spoons and the various props are carefully, permanently marked and identified in such a way that the identification marks can't be changed and they're all cataloged and photographed. But he decided not to do that. He would just put little paper tags on them with the string mm -hmm. and whatnot. And what you guys had done was simply slip off one of these Switch and put the another one on that you knew the spoon would be slightly different in weight. Right. And they were astonished. The spoon actually gained weight. Well, and it actually changed shape because that's the one that I moved off to the side and started working with another one yep. and leaned on the neck of the original spoon so that the cameraman couldn't see it and a miracle happened. But there you see, folks, that's how easy it was to fool the scientists because the scientists said, oh, we're dealing with kids here. Kids can't fool PhDs. Oh, yes, they can. And they did. No question of it whatsoever. Now, other examples. Give us another example of how well, easy it was. First of all, let me, let me back up for a second and say that it, it wasn't easy because while you were actually working with us as part of Project Alpha, you were making our job harder. Yeah. Because every time we would tell you a new technique, mm -hmm. how we delivered something, exactly. you would write off a letter to Phillips Same. and, and basically you. said, you know, for example, if you're letting people yeah. handle things, don't do it. If yeah. the boys are touching objects, don't let them do this. Keep this thing more controlled. So you were putting in uh, safeguards that they yeah. didn't think of. Yeah. And yeah. so Steve and I would show up the next time that we were at the lab and go, oh, that Darn or Andy. <laughs> he, the, the parapsychologists weren't getting smarter. You were educating them better. Yeah, yeah. Which was, made our job much was, more difficult. I was being perfectly fair. Yes, now, you were. I hadn't yes, been you retained were. by them. I hadn't even had the agreement. I agreed to, to serve with no payment whatsoever. Mm -hmm. If they wanted me to go there, they had to pay my transportation and my hotel. That's all I wanted. I didn't want any, any remuneration for it personally uh, to me. Not at all. I, I never asked for that and I refused to take it. But the point was that when you offer your services like that, they look at you and they say, why would he do a thing like that? Mm -hmm. There must be something wrong. Well, there was something wrong, but it wasn't with yep. me, it was with you guys. Exactly right. 